This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. Welcome to Talk of Asian Marketing and a little bit a change of direction. We're going to spend some time in Singapore. We're going to mix it up with some of our other video from China, from Taiwan, and other places, but we're going to have quite a number of videos from Singapore. I'm out in Singapore doing some work with the University of Sterling. In fact, that's the shirt I'm wearing. That's their logo. We're doing a big project out here, and I'm involved in that. It gives me some time to do some things on the side, like go out and shoot some video, like today's video. Now, you can see the cities behind me. It's the city of Singapore, city-state, kind of like Hong Kong. Uh, if you don't know anything about it, we've got a couple wiki, maybe links that you can uh, get some more information. What we're going to center on, of course, are the consumer behaviors that are going on here. The place I'm at is not downtown. You can see this doesn't look like fancy downtown. We have some photos of that downtown. That's where people who are tourists usually visit. That's where your expatriates, you'll mostly see them. That's where your people with big money are going to be. But that's not the majority of your consumers. They're out in other locations around the island, specifically in a location like this, which is the north part of the island, where it's called the heartland. The heartland meaning this is where the majority of the ethnic Chinese are living, and it's not downtown on Orchard Road. Today's video is a little interesting. It's one of the first experiences I had in coming to Singapore, that kind of economic experience, consumer experience I had, and maybe you can follow it, look at some of the consumer cam, and get something out of it. It's not really a kind of study, it's not an academic study, it's just a real-life kind of cinema verte of something to happen. The situation is this. We needed to get a wheelchair. We had a relative visiting, they flew over an airplane, couldn't bring a wheelchair, cost too much, too much trouble, so we need to go rent a wheelchair. Well, where could we rent a wheelchair at? Hospitals, some pharmacies had them, some wheelchair supply places had them, but it was all very expensive. We're talking hundreds of dollars, and we only needed them for a few days, hundreds of U.S. dollars. So what did we do? Got online, got on uh, Yahoo Singapore. There's your global thing, Yahoo. We got on there, found some person selling it privately. In fact, this guy had a whole list of things he was renting, including hospital beds and wheelchairs and uh, oxygen tanks and a bunch of other stuff he was selling. So it looked like a real... A serious person, a supplier, but the prices were incredibly cheap. So we could rent, w rent a wheelchair for one week just for about oh, 30 Singapore uh, dollars, about 20 US dollars for a week. Compared to the other prices we were seeing, it was completely different. A little bit suspicious, we're a little bit worried, but that price, we couldn't stay away from it, and I thought, what a great chance to go explore. The address was nowhere near a hospital, was not downtown. In fact, it was in a place just like what we see back here, which are public housing blocks, which are government supported, and you just, they're just packed in, totally crammed in, just like in Hong Kong, crammed in there. And, um, well, how are we going to find a supplier there? So what we did is we went down to that location, and that's where we pick up with our consumer cam. Now, we did get a receipt. I've got it here. So when we went down there, we had to sign in. I had to show my residency card since I'm uh, here. I do have a residency card. I'm working here on a long-term project. So the, everything seemed very official, but you will see the actual context was very unofficial. We've got the receipt. It is actually 30 Singapore dollars to rent the wheelchair for one week. We didn't need it for one week, but it's one week is a standard, standard amount. The deposit was 80. Now, if you go buy a wheelchair, they're going to cost more than this. Uh, 30 Singapore dollars, about 20 US dollars to rent. 80 Singapore dollars, about what, 65 dollars? There's no way that's a, 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 a complete deposit. You can't buy a new one with that. So these prices were extremely low. When you see where we went, you might figure out why. Another clue, there is the receipts has no company name. The receipt is just something you get at a bookstore. Maybe I'll scan this and put it on the page. Uh, in fact, it's missing the tax. And they're very strict about tax in Singapore. So today's video, a little 
a gray market, I think, maybe a little black market, a little underground market going on there. And of course, this happens everywhere. But what's interesting is that if you didn't get out of the downtown area, if you didn't get away from your kind of expatriate experience in Singapore, you'd never see this kind of thing. And yet, it's very common. It's going on all of the time. And we had the opportunity to experience some of it. I have to say, when we did first find a location, it was very difficult to find. It was a really complicated path. After taking the subway, going off, going through all these blocks, getting really deep into some uh, block houses down there, apartments, uh, places, and then finally finding a place, going upstairs, complete chaos, a total mess. Not at all the picture you think of the Singapore being so clean and organized. Uh, it's organized in a way. I mean, the, the blocks are all very organized, but it was a mess. A really bad smell, too. In fact, my daughter was betting me that we should look inside one of the windows in the hallway there because she's sure there was someone dead inside. The smell was so strong. We almost left before our contact showed up. He kept calling us saying he's being held up, he's being held up. He even told us he had an accident. He stuck it in, in, on the road because he's had an, a serious accident. But he did come in with a... Um, arm which seemed to be sprained or unable to use so maybe he really did have an accident but it made us all very suspicious of the situation in the end we got a receipt i don't know what good that is we did return the wheelchair in just a few days got a great deal about 20 us dollars to rent it for a week wheelchair worked fine in fact it was a really high quality wheelchair i don't think he's buying them on the market and putting them there in fact if you see the video um, you draw your own conclusions so, a little bit different, a little bit a different take this time. Nothing super research. You make your own judgment. Some cinema verte of the gray market in Singapore. This is us shopping for a wheelchair. Sorry, Frankie. You want me to go take a picture of the naked guy sitting here? He's so afraid he just stands here. I thought he scares people for his pleasure. You can see him? All right, we're right here. Don't talk about people when you're near them. Like Apple. My mom was talking about her. We found the Apple. I was like, Apple's right there. She's like, oh, she can't hear me. Can take off your shoes and walk in and make a decision. That's the lightest one. The lightest one. Is it still in here? Push it and you say you want to have a small red thread. This is red light. That one's red light. You want the thing to go back. And you go back. You want to go back.
This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior.